Hi, I'm Jay Andrews and this is Laguna Tools and this is the new C-Flux Cyclone dust collection system. Today we're going to take one of these out of the box and do a complete assembly. Everything from the caster, the cartridge filter and even the optional automatic filter cleaning system. Now this is how your C-Flux dust collector is going to arrive at your shop. It'll be on the pallet and banded up and we've also selected the auto clean kit that we're going to install on this collector a little bit later so you get a chance to see all the options for this machine. Let's go ahead and open this up, uncrate the items and set them out on the workbench and have a look at all the components and then we'll go through and do a complete assembly for you. Now the first step is to get all the items uncrated and out of the box and you'll see that one of the most important features is right here and this is the owner's manual. Take this out and follow all the guidelines when you're going through and setting up your dust collector. You'll notice that the remote control is set right here on the bottom so make sure you don't lose that. We'll cover that a little bit more later when we get the uh, unit set up and operating here. So let's go ahead and set this to the side here and get all of our components unboxed. And one of the last parts on the top here is the canister plate. We'll set this to the side and you'll see that right underneath this is a box of parts. We'll go ahead and lift this out of the way. And that'll complete all of our parts to the top section. Now there's two ways to get to this point uh, in the machine here. One of them is to break up the styrofoam packing material on the top and kind of take it out piece by piece and it gets a little bit messy. The other way is to go through and kind of remove the box from around the components at this stage here. In order to do that, there are four of the corner protection guards. We we'll simply remove these out and then take a slice right down the side of the box. Now that we've got most of the packing material away from it, we're going to go ahead and remove a few of the loose components that are sitting inside of the box here. So we'll take these out and set these to the side. The splitter assembly sits right here in the end. We'll go ahead and take this out of the way. Now the filter cartridge assembly sits on the bottom. You'll want to have someone help you lift. So they'll lift on the other end. We'll lift on this end and slide it out through the motor end. Be careful with the filter cartridge that you don't damage it as you're moving it. Now here's the octagonal panels for the drum. Slide these out. Now you can see how well packaged this uh, C-Flux dust collector is. We've come to the heaviest part here and this is the entire frame and motor and impeller assembly all together. We're going to lift this out. Now this is the heaviest part. You want to get a friend to help you out. You may want to go ahead and remove the sides of the styrofoam packing so you can slide it off the pallet. Or the one thing I want to encourage you to do is leave all the hardware in its individual bag until you're doing that component. This one here is labeled Cyclone Barrel. When we get to that, then we'll open these individual bags up. The one bag that you will open right now is your wrenches. You've got some wrenches to go through and do assembly. You can open those up. You may want to also grab a ratchet and a screwdriver to help you out as you go through and do the assembly. The first step is a little bit of disassembly. We're going to bring the base over, flip it over, and take the bottom off. Now we've laid the unit over on its side and I've used one of these packing blankets here to go through and give it some padding. The one thing you want to do before removing the base is to make sure that it's secure and not wobbly. And I'm going to take the box that all the hardware came in. I saved this box and I'm going to slide it right underneath the motor right here. And this is going to provide some stability as I go through and remove the base. Now the first step on the base is to install the casters. I'm going to do the first one and then we'll do three more after that. Now that you've got the casters on the base and you've got the base flipped over, it's time to install the lower upright supports. There are three of the lower upright supports and each of them is individually marked for its exact location. Refer to the owner's manual so you can see the location. Here are the markings. You've got position one, two, and three. Refer to the manual and those will dictate the correct location for each one of these lower upright supports. Now for the lower upright supports, you're gonna to wanna to use the bolts that we previously removed out of here when we separated the base from the upper assembly. We'll grab those bolts and the washers. We're gonna start with number one 
and it's going to go in the front position right here. And this is unit number two, and this is going to go on the right hand side of the opened end. Now finally number three is going to go on the left hand side of the open end of the frame. Now the next step is to install the foam tape to the upper and lower rims of all three of the uh, cyclone components. The cyclone funnel, the cyclone intake barrel, and then the intake cylinder. Now it's time to install the inlet cylinder onto the bottom here of the fan. There are four bolts that you're going to use, and these ones are a little bit different. They'll be in a special bag here Mike's marked Cyclone Vein, and these ones have a little lock wash on the bottom. Make sure you're using these. These are the appropriate length so that they don't get up into the fan assembly, and they've got the lock washer on them. Start them all by hand, leave them a little bit loose until they're all in place, and then tighten them down with a wrench. Now next it's uh, the part here that we call the uh, cyclone barrel and this is where the inlet is, this is where all the dust inlet is here. There's a little tag right here and this tag shows that we have to align the two welds and we're going to align this weld right here with the weld on the inside of the, the tapered portion of the cyclone. The one thing you do want to pay attention to is that the inlet is going to kind of be on the left hand side. Now we can index this or turn this a little bit once it's up in position but you want to make sure that this enters on the left hand side because that's the direction that the cyclone is going to spin. Now this is the cyclone barrel and we're going to attach it to the upper housing assembly here and uh, this is where the inlet is. You want to pay attention to the orientation of this inlet. As you install it on here and as you're looking at it from the front of the machine, remember this is the top over here. This is going to be on your left hand side of the machine so as we install it this way it'll want to be up. Now you can orient this inlet 30 degrees this way, straight on, or up to 60 degrees facing the other way here. I'm going to install it pointed straight out the front, but you can adjust this to suit your own shop needs by bolting it on in any of these positions. Let's go ahead and grab our nuts and bolts and put it on. Now we're ready to install the cyclone cone onto the bottom of the cyclone barrel and I can remove the tag now. This is the tag that reminds us to align the welds on the bottom here. We'll take the tag off. We're going to align the weld on the inside of the barrel to the inside of the cone. I'll bring these two together and we're going to use a nut and bolt to go through and assemble these here. We'll put the bolt right through and we'll install the nut and a washer on the bottom side to hold the two flanges together. Next it's time to attach the base that we've pre-assembled to the top section here. We'll bring this in, flip it over on its side, and we'll want to make sure that our markings here, our number one, two, and three, match up with the one, two, and three on the bottom side of the upper structure. Now make sure as you install these bolts that you leave them finger tight until you have all three sections aligned. You know you'll have a proper alignment when these two ends sit flush together. Now 
Now that we have all three sections attached, we'll go through and snug it down. Align it by hand here so that they're flush on the edge and the front and back. And finally secure the bolts. The next step is to install the upright support reinforcement plates. Now those reinforcement brackets provide enough structure to keep this thing rigid and solid. Now that it's rigid and solid, we're ready to stand it upright. And don't try this by yourself. You want to get someone to help you lift this up. This is a very heavy unit now. And in order so the uh, switch assembly doesn't flop around, I kind of tuck it in this little open area here so that as I stand it up, it's not going to flop around and get in my way. Let's go ahead and get this thing stood up and continue with assembly. Now I've got the unit stood up, it's really starting to look like a dust collector. And in standing it up, I caution you to make sure that you get some help doing it. Two people may not be enough if you don't have the muscle strength to lift it, because this is getting kind of heavy. If you need three people or four people to do that, or you can use an overhead lift to help you out. Just be careful not to bend the sheet metal as you're lifting it up, you want to use some straps. But uh, take caution when you stand it up, because it is quite heavy. Now we're ready for the next step, and that's these lower triangle support plates that you'll see right here. We've got the support bracket, we've got two bolts that hold it on, and they drop right down here on top of the frame. Let's go ahead and get these set in place. The next step is to install what we call the foot pedal bracket, and there's a left and a right. When you install these, you're going to make sure that you orient them like this, and this little knob, this little protrusion is pointed toward the center of the machine, and this will mean that it's the right hand side. The lower end of it is going to go into the triangle support bracket that we just installed and we're going to do it using these long bolts right here. So let's go ahead and get this bolted on. We've got the long bolts, nuts, and washers and it's going to come right on in, drop right into the slot of the machine, just like that. And there's a little stiffening bracket that we're going to put on the inside. It's going to slide right over the piece. And the bolts will go right through it. And then you'll simply install a washer and a nut on each one of these. Leave them finger tight right now so that you can adjust the top position. And then once you have this done on the right hand side, you'll repeat this procedure on the left hand side. Now the next step is to secure the foot pedal support to the lower upright legs that we've installed on the machine using these little square carriage bolts. There's a little square shoulder on the inside. It'll fit the square holes on the inside of the support plates and on the upright supports. Now our support plates are going to mount on the inside of the uprights using the square shoulder holes and a carriage bolt. Hold that in place. Grab a washer and a nut. I find that it's easiest to let it hang on the first hole and then swing it up in place for the second. Swing it into place. Second carriage bolt. Washer and a nut. You can go ahead and tighten these down now since they're located by the carriage bolt in the exact location. Repeat the process on the other side and then next we're going to bring the long bolts through and clamp this all together. Now your long bolt drops through the top, a nut and washer on the bottom, Now you're going to grab the bar assembly and it's going to go over these little lug posts on the inside here. Install one side, on the other side compress it in a little bit, slide it over and then just let it hang down. And you're going to bring these little pivot caps and just slide them right onto the post. And then finally, you're going to secure those in place with these bolts 
you'll need to have an Allen wrench handy and that's not supplied with the machine. Bring that in and then secure it with your Allen wrench. Repeat on the other side. Now we're going to bring this little shoulder bolt and a lock nut to secure this handle to the linkage. Simply bring this shoulder bolt through from the outside toward the middle. Bring the lock nut on the inside. Secure this with a wrench and repeat on the other side. Now when you tighten down this lock nut, don't clamp this too tight, otherwise you won't have the, the pivot action that you need right here. Now we're ready to install the hexagonal lid here for the drum. In order to do that, I find it's easy just to push this bar down and get it out of the way. And we want to be observant of the tag now. And what this tells us is to go through and install the uh, eight bolts in the top here, but leave them a little bit loose so that you can go through and you can adjust this. And what you want to do is make sure that the sides of this are parallel with the sides of the upright supports here. And this ingenious design allows you to actually swivel this plus or minus about 30 degrees. Now first, preload the bolts and let gravity work for you. Now you bring the lid in with the flange side down toward the ground and have your nuts and washers ready to go. I like to start one or two of these and then come back in and follow up with the rest. Now we've just installed these finger tight and you can actually see what that movement that we're talking about is. This allows you to go through and pivot this back and forth. That alignment will be critical as you begin to line the drum up on the bottom for the catch assemblies here. So we're going to leave those loose. Let's go through and start building the drum. We'll slide it underneath and then finally we'll tighten those up. Now back at the workbench we're going to go through and install the casters on the bottom of the hexagonal drum. And what the first thing we'll do is we'll put a washer on the bottom and then slide it through the drum plate, second washer, and then finally a nut. And as you do this, you want to make sure that the embossed side here is kind of pointed upwards, and this gives it a lot of strength. We've got one of those in place. I'll get the next ones on, and then finally we'll come back around and we'll tighten these down with the wrenches that are provided. Secure these in place using two wrenches, one to hold the caster, nut on the bottom and the other one to tighten it on top. Now what you want to do is lay out three sides here and you want to lay out the three sides that have these left and right markings and get the uh, corresponding sides all set up here. Locate the bag with the screws, get yourself a screwdriver. You can do this with a screwdriver but there's a lot of screws right here so we're going to go through and just use a little drill driver and make sure that you have the uh, setting on this one set down to low so you don't strip it out. This is just going into sheet metal. Let's go ahead and get these units stood up. We'll bring the side panels in place and go ahead and screw it together. Now left to left and right to right and make sure that the side comes over the front piece right here. And then start your screws and run them into place. Now for the right side, make sure to line up your holes, these are the lift brackets and these are going to mount to the side of the assembly here and before you put the other panel on, we're going to go through and we're going to bolt these to the outside using the carriage bolts and I find that it's easy to leave this open and to bring the fasteners through and assemble this right now while the back is still open. So we'll put a carriage bolt in here, slide it through the side panel, washer on the inside, followed by the nut. All right, install two more and then repeat on the other side. Now these little black plastic caps are supplied and these go right over these little screw heads and those will prevent any damage to your bags 
that line the inside of the drum. And these just simply fit right over the screw heads and I find it's easy to get as many of these on as you can before you put on the back panel. The other thing that you may want to do at this time is right here at this joint is just to apply a thin small bead of silicone right here at these seams or at the joints and that'll help you maintain the, uh, the pressures inside and not have any air leaks. Now while the drum is still open on the back side it's a great time to install these handles that will mount right to the front of the drum. One will mount here on the top and one at the bottom. And those will be make it uh, real easy for you to lift this drum up and to dump it out. And to do that we're going to use this little screw that goes on the back, put a washer on it and a little acorn or cap nut that's going to go on the front. We'll simply put the bolt through, slide the handle on the front and then install the nut. Thread it in from the back. Get the second one in place. and then finally tighten it down with a screwdriver. And repeat this for the bottom handle. Now that we've got this thing almost all completely assembled, we're gonna go ahead and put the back panel on, making sure that there are holes on the bottom that correspond with the same holes on the bottom flange on the inside. You don't wanna have them pointed up, otherwise you have to take it off and put it back on. Let's get this put in place. It'll slide on the inside of the side handles. And we'll put the screws in, just like we did before. Now's a great time to go through and finish off installing the little black plastic caps on the remaining screws. And a great time to apply any silicone sealer if you want to on that seam line. Now finally it's time to assemble the bottom plate here with the casters that are on it. I flip the drum upside down. I'll put the plate on the bottom and then secure it in place with screws. Here's our last screw. I'm really pleased with the fit and finish of this and how easy this went together. I'm going to flip it over, put those last little plastic caps on the ends of these screws, and we'll be ready for the next step. Now that the drum assembly is all together and it's on wheels, it's time to finally install the gasket. And the gasket has kind of a wider side and a little lip right here. This wider side is going to go toward the up and you'll install it by just pressing it onto the side rails here. Uh, it's got a little metal tab on the inside, or a little metal um, strip on the inside, so as you press this into place, once you finally make this seal, you need some tin snips to go through and just snip it and cut it to the final length. And you can start this wherever you like, just continue right around the perimeter of the drum, pressing it right over the lip, make sure that you're tight in all the corners, and this will provide the seal that you need seal out your dust and to provide a good vacuum for your cyclone. Now I've got it all the way around, I'm going to grab some tin snips and we'll do that final lip. Alright, so now those meet up really good. Your C-Flux dust collector is designed to provide a lot of suction and because it provides so much suction, we use a liner assembly to drop down and hold the bag assembly in place and if we didn't use such a beefy liner, that bag would actually get sucked up into the cyclone. So let's go ahead, there's uh, four different pieces here. We've got the uh, drum insert uh, hardware right here and assemble this just like we did the drum. We'll bring these up, overlap them. And this actually uses a nut and bolt assembly. Put this through from the outside and a little nut on the inside. And repeat the process all the way around until all four pieces are assembled. All right, we've got all four pieces together here, we're going to go ahead and bring the ends in together, overlap them, and bring in the last set of screws. Once you have all these screws in place, then you can come back and 
tighten them down with a screwdriver. I find it's just easy to leave them finger tight, bring everything together. It makes the assembly go by a little bit quicker, a little bit easier. Finally, it's time to install our plastic bag, and this is what's going to contain all this sawdust inside. Now, your machine will come with several of these plastic bags. When you fit it inside the drum, you'll go ahead and put it all the way to the bottom, lift the top over, and then we'll drop the insert in. When you fold it over, make sure that you smooth it out in the corners, press it down to place in the bottom. Now the liner is going to drop inside, and this is where these little rubber handle inserts come in place. These are really nice. Lift this thing up, and it's kind of heavy, but it's heavy because this thing develops so much suction. Drop this in place. Those smooth-headed screws are going to be on the outside, and that provides the cavity for all the sawdust and shavings to go into. And when you get ready to dump this out, you'll reach in here, grab these handles, and kind of wiggle it out through the sawdust to pull the liner out. Now this drum attachment uh, mechanism here is one of the neatest features on this. You simply slide the drum in place. These side catches are going to line up with those lugs and simply push the handle down. That'll raise the drum up off the floor and engage the gasket to the bottom. Now we've left these bolts loose and that allows us to go through and position the top exactly square with our drum. And once we have that exactly where we like it, we've checked for fit all the way around, we can drop it down and tighten these down. I've got the drum in place. I've got the top squared up. I'm ready to tighten them down. So I'll go ahead and drop the drum out, slide it out, and I'll just go ahead and tighten these fasteners down. All right, now we've got these bolts tightened down and this lid is now a secure part of the machine. We're gonna go back and just do one last test fit of the drum. And you wanna make sure that the little side catches here engage with the little lug that's on the bottom here. That's the lift mechanism. And you want to just check to fit, check the fit as they come in place, making sure that the left side and the right side are both in place. And that'll allow this to work properly each and every time. The next thing we're going to do is install the electrical switch. And it bolts right onto the side of this motor plate. And this is one of the things I like about this machine is that the motor bolts securely down to the cyclone and to the impeller housing, but it also has this great rigid side plate to eliminate any type of vibration. There's a side cover plate that will bolt on right here. That simply attaches with four fasteners. Get this in place. Next up will be the switch assembly. Now we're ready to hang the switch assembly on the side of the motor plate. And you'll notice that it has these little keyhole slots right there. And we're gonna go through and install these two screws these are the little machine screws that come in the package right in the top. Leave these really loose so that you can hang the switch assembly up onto those screws and then snug them down later. We'll put just the top two on, grab the switch assembly, and hang it right onto those top two screws. Now what we'll do is we'll go through and open up the cover and run the screws through from the inside. There's a single screw right here at the bottom of the outer cover. Simply remove this screw. And the outer cover should lift off and open up. And this will give you access to get in and tighten the small screws that are in the keyhole slots on the top and then to install the screws on the bottom. Now make sure that you do not have your machine connected to power as you've got the side cover open here. You want to make sure that uh, you don't have any electrical problems by having this engaged. Okay, I've got the top two secured. Let me run the bottom two in place. All right, just some, the screw on the end of your screwdriver. Carefully position it inside. You'll want to have plenty of light and probably a step stool for this. All right, I've got three out of four screws. One more will get us done. Now the top of the cover has these two holes and those engage the little posts that are on top. So we'll go through and Hang this over on the post, making sure not to pinch any wires. Pull it down, snap it in place, and then reinstall the anchor screw.
Now it's time for the next part, which is to install the top cover plate here. We're going to install it to the top of the dust chute. You'll simply align this to the top of the machine, line up the holes with this flanged side up, the little lip up here. That way it'll give you the flat part on the bottom. Simply line it up with the screw holes. And then you can put your screws in one by one. I like to put a couple of these in to get them started and tighten them on opposite sides. Now you can do this with a screwdriver or you can make it a little bit faster using a drill driver, but make sure you have the torque setting set to the lowest setting so you don't strip out the sheet metal. Now it's time to install this upper flange assembly. This will bolt right directly in the top here. And this has a seal, and this will hold the shaft that comes through for the filter cleaning mechanism. And you'll notice that there's a small little lip, a metal lip on this side, and that'll fit directly into the hole in the center of the top cover. And it just fits into place with these four bolts. And finally, just secure these with your wrench or with a ratchet. Now that the upper cover plate is in place and our flange is installed with the uh, little seal, it's time to bring the post up here, the shaft for the filter cleaning mechanism, and we'll bring that up and put the handle on. Now we're ready to install the, uh, the filter assembly, but first we're going to go through and install these little uh, cleaning paddles, and these go on the inside of the filter assembly. And this is all the hardware that's inside the canister filter bag. We'll lay this out. And this is actually the rod that uh, th these little cleaning paddles will attach to. The first thing I want to notice is that we have some shorter screws and some longer screws. We're going to use the shorter screws here for the filter paddle assemblies here. I'll line two of these up, put them on the bench, let gravity work for me, and I'll drop the paddle assembly right over that. And then finally, we're going to go through and use these little lock nuts. These are nylock nuts. And I'll start these by finger, I'll come and put both of them on, then I'll tighten them down with a wrench. We brought the filter canister over and we're ready to install the paddle assembly. And this is one of the features that I really like about this machine, is that it's got filter cleaning uh, mechanism here. Now you'll see that it's got a small stub on the bottom right here. And we're going to slide that down into the filter. There's a little tab or a little hole for this to, uh, to drop into. And as you do that, you might have to go through and bend these a little bit just to go through and fit them into the filter. And uh, once you've got it into place here, we're going to go through and install the top assembly. Let's go ahead and drop this in. And we're going to slightly bend these filter paddles a little bit to drop them in place. All right, now they should slide straight down. That post will engage the bracket on the bottom, and we've got this ready to go. Now we're ready to install the cartridge assembly up onto the dust chute of the machine. And first you'll want to observe that we've got what they call a key bolt right here. It looks like a key and it's a bolt. And you can actually tighten this or loosen this up depending on your needs here. We're going to tighten this one a little bit and slide that back over. That way as you engage this and tighten it down the machine, this will get sufficient pressure. I'm going to take a little more tension by running that bolt in. And that'll get us ready to go to install this. Okay, we're pretty close right there. I can still adjust on the machine if I need to. I've set the filter assembly right onto the back of the machine, and we're going to engage it on the flange here on the dust chute. This is a little rubber flange here, and put it up in place. This might be a good spot for someone to give you a hand. We're going to push this up in place, and later we'll put the cap on the top here. Let's go ahead and raise this up and get the clamp locked in. Okay, line up the band clamp here and snap that in place. I'm going to loosen it and readjust it a little bit. Okay. You want to make sure that you've got this latch firmly in place and you take some time to align the band clamp. One of the things that I found is that by taking this little rubber seal that's at the top of the canister filter and actually bending it out a little bit, it gives me a little bit of a cone shape that helps us to slide it over the top of this flange. And again, you can do this by yourself, but it's probably best off to have a helper to push up from the bottom as you're getting that lined up in place and then bring that band clamp around it and finally get it snapped in place. And if you wanted to, you could put a little catch on the end here so that that doesn't spring loose. But now that I've got that secured in place here, I'm ready to go for the next assembly. And the filter cleaning handle will drop right on top of this. And 
Now just install the bolt and washer into the top handle. Now this is a two horsepower unit. The two horsepower unit and the three horsepower unit will be the same. If you have the one and a half horsepower unit, the handle will be up on top. Same procedure, just a different shape handle. Let's go ahead and tighten this down. Let's have a look at the bottom and we're going to anchor that post in with this large bolt and then the large washer. Now that we've got the filter assembly in place here, we're going to look at the uh, intake inlets here. For and we've got choice of two different ones here that will fit over the 8-inch inlet. Of course, we can plumb this to an 8-inch line or we can use a splitter or a reducer. If we use the, re the uh, splitter on the front, it'll simply slide in place and there's a few attaching screws that will allow you to go through and attach this on there. One of the things I really like is that there's a plug here for the splitter so I can run just a single 4-inch hose or I can run two four inch hoses right off the front of the splitter. Now one of the last pieces that you're gonna to have to install is at the bottom of the cartridge filter and it's the cartridge filter bag. It's a short bag and it's designed to collect dust right here at the bottom of the filter when you use the filter cleaning handle. And it's uh, just a short bag, it slides over the bottom and it'll secure in place with just a standard spring band clamp. These will simply overlap each other like this. Bring the spring into place and catch the hooks. Center your clamp. Finally snug this in place. Now when you clean your filter, it'll catch the dust right in this lower bag. I usually like to pull this bag up a little higher and then just simply pull it down over the clamp assembly. That keeps it neat looking, gives you the maximum filtration area, and keeps you from rubbing up against the clamp. So that takes care of the filter bag. One last detail that you need to do before you use your dust collector is to get it some power. And over here on the switch side, we've left the cord loose. And you can see that the machine ships with a cord, but with no plug. And you'll need to install a plug that matches your installation. This is a 220 volt unit. We also make it in a 110 volt unit. On a 220, you've got two hot legs and the green is gonna be your ground and you're gonna install a plug that matches your shop installation. It might be just a small NEMA plug or it might be a twist lock plug and you'll find the one that matches your, your uh, shop. But that's two hots and a ground and on a 110 volt, you'll have a hot, a neutral and a ground to make that connection. If you have any questions in terms of the electrical, get a qualified electrician and install your plug for you. Well, there you have it. Now we've finished doing the complete assembly of the C-Flux Cyclone Dust Collection System, and we've even installed the automatic filter cleaning system, and you've got one of the best dust collectors on the marketplace in your shop. This is sure to keep you uh, clean and dust-free for many, many years to come in your shop. Now, if you have any questions on the C-Flux Cyclone Dust Collection System or on any of our products, Give us a call toll-free at 800-234-1976 or look us up on the web at lagunatools.com.